From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Are you the Mr. Dollar from Hartford? That's right. Who's this? Jim Akins, Vicksburg Police Department. I'm sending a car over to pick you up, Mr. Dollar. Some questions I want to ask you about that young lady you were with last night. I hope you weren't planning on leaving town. Of course I wasn't. I canceled my plane reservations last night. If you tell me where you're located, I'll come down by myself. No sense getting head up. You aren't in your own backyard now, you know, Dollar. I know where I am, the town where a girl died in my arms. If you can stop getting lazy with me for a minute, maybe you can tell me who she was. Why? Because I'd like to talk to her family. I was the last one to see her alive. Who is she? We haven't identified her yet. To us, she's still Jane Doe. <laughs> Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Vicksburg, Virginia, to <laughs> to Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Plantagen matter. A real mystery about a very mysterious girl who happened to be dead. Expense account item five, ten cents, one morning newspaper, which carried a two-inch story and a half-inch space about an unidentified girl who had died at Vicksburg Emergency Hospital the previous evening. I was reading it over in the lobby of the Plantagen Hotel when one of the Vicksburg police force stepped up to the desk and asked for my room number. He was a swarthy man in a black suit, plain clothes type. Well? I beg pardon? I'm Johnny Dollar. Oh. Jim Akins. We talked on the phone a little while ago. You said you were sending a car. Well, you sounded so huffy about everything, I thought I'd drop over myself to say hello. I got the car outside. Okay, okay, let's go then. Where are you from, Dollar? Hartford, Connecticut. I'm an insurance investigator. Look, I talked to a man in your burglary division yesterday about the burglary they had at the hotel yesterday. I was sent down here by Eastern Seaboard Casualty Insurance Company. You got any identification on you? Yeah, sure. Here. Okay. Look like who you say you are. Now, just what was your connection with that girl who died at the emergency hospital? I met her outside in the parking lot last night, back at this hotel. She was with a man. I don't know who he was. They were having an argument... I stopped when she asked me to help her. I, uh, I got rid of the man and took her inside here and bought her a drink. Then I started to put her in a cab to send her home. But she got sick before the cab could take off, so I took her to the hospital. She died there. And that, Mr. Reagans, is it. How long did you know her? About a half hour, all told. She didn't tell you her name? No. Where she lived? No. Hmm. The name of this man she was with in the parking lot, who was he? I haven't the slightest idea. Well... What kind of trouble was she having with him? She didn't tell me that either. I didn't ask her. But you sat in the cocktail lounge over there and you had a drink or two. One. One. No name, no address, no nothing. Well, maybe we better do all our talking downtown. Anything you say, Higgins. Let's go. Higgins turned out to be a lieutenant. And it took him the whole ride downtown to thaw out and make up his mind that I was just as concerned about what had happened to the unidentified girl as he was. He rephrased, but asked me the same questions in front of a stenographer when we got down to his office. He was still asking me questions when he led me and the police stenographer to the basement of the building, the morgue. And she didn't say anything to you about herself before she collapsed, huh? No. All I know is what I've told you. You're sure? Positive. Hey, look, let me ask you one. I've put up with yours for over an hour now. <laughs> Why, sure. What killed her? Yeah. Well, do you know? No, we're still trying to find out. What did you talk about while you were having that drink with her? She asked me for help, that's all. It seems she needed somebody else to do the talking at the time, so I did it. I made jokes and tried to get her to laugh. I was a great big cut-up. Get sawed me if you want it. It won't do much good. Still got some things to find out. Yeah. Lousy, ain't it? It sure is. This is the girl you were with last night? Yes. You're positive? I'm positive. 
Okay, Dolly, you want to sign this for the records? Well, that's... That's good. All right, Sam, you can send this on upstairs. We'll be up pretty soon. Now, Dollar, did anyone there at the hotel bar seem to know her? I don't know. Cocktail waitress, somebody like that? I don't know. Well, I do. We asked around. No one there had ever seen in the Plantagen Hotel before. Tell me something, Dolly. You ever worked on one like this? No, not quite. Okay, then. I'm going to tell you what we're up against. All the clothes she was wearing was standard brand stuff. Mostly come from stores downtown, some of them New York. It's going to take us a long time to check them out. We may not be able to trace them at all. We're going to work on the cleaning marks, too, and that'll take time. Now, from what you say and from what she said, and that wasn't much, she's probably a local girl. Somebody's wondering about her, but nobody come in and make out a report asking for her. I hate to do it. I might have to take a picture, run it in tonight's paper, just find out who she is. That could be pretty lousy for somebody. It's a lousy business. I thought you could help me, Dollar. How? Well, two things. One, that bird she was with. He was arguing with out in the parking lot, you say. That meant he must have had a car out there. But you didn't bother to take a look at it. No, no, I didn't. And another thing now, where's her purse? I don't know. Well, she must have powdered her nose when she sat down to have that drink with you. Every woman does. She must have reached for a cigarette or something in that purse. So where is that purse? I don't know. Well, now, you see? You see how much help you are to me? Oh, just a second. Morg, Lieutenant Akins. Oh, yeah, put him on. While Lieutenant Akins talked on the telephone, I lit a cigarette. After that, I tried to interest myself in a calendar that was hanging on the wall. After that, I tried tying both shoelaces. But wherever my eyes roved around that white-tiled room, somehow, they always came back to rest on the quiet, still form of the girl who'd asked me for help. By any standard, she was attractive. Fine, golden hair spun out of smooth white skin. I remember her eyes had been very big and very brown. Now they were closed. But she looked more asleep than, than what she was. She looked as though she might wake up any minute and answer me if I said out loud what I was saying to myself silently. How can I help you? Let's get out of here, Dollar. Okay by me. That was the lab on the phone. Had a little trouble with analysis. What analysis? What kind of trouble? Identifying. They called in a toxicologist from the university. A drug called perimythol killed her. Perimythol? That's a new one on me. Yeah, me too. Petrol-based stuff. Now, they figured it had been in her stomach an hour or so before she collapsed. Could be a suicide, judging from the way she acted and talked to you. What about the boyfriend? Well, that seems to fit in okay. She told you she was disappointed in him, didn't she? Well, sometimes women want to end it all in front of a guy they're having trouble with. It'll probably turn out that oh, way. Oh, you talk like a cop, Akins. That's what I Everything's am. so simple. Make it fit into your formula. This girl knocked herself off because she lost her boyfriend. This girl killed herself because she lost her job. Fill it in, fill it in. Get it off the whoa, books. Whoa, Dollar, whoa. What's the matter with you? What are you getting at? Oh, oh I don't know. Forget it, will you, Lieutenant? No, now, wait a minute. Wait just a minute. I'm not all cop, Dollar. I saw her laying there, too. And I can see she was a nice girl. Something went awful wrong with her. If I'd been the last one to be with and talk to her alive, why, I'd probably be taking it the same way you are. But take it easy. Sorry, Lieutenant. Yeah. Well, I'll buy you some breakfast. He did, but it didn't help much. And after that, we shook hands and parted. Expense account item six, two dollars. Cab fare back to the Plantagen Hotel. I went up to my room, packed my bags, called the airport, and made arrangements to leave on the six o'clock plane. There was nothing more I could do about the case. Nothing more at all. It was police business. I had time before the plane for a quiet drink at the hotel bar. What's your pleasure, sir? Oh, some of that little water. Yes, sir. You, uh... You on duty last night by any chance? Uh, yes, sir. Why, you ask? I just wondered if you happen to remember me. No, sir. Uh, uh, were you at the bar? At that table over there with a lady, a blonde girl in a green suit. Well, I'm sorry. I just don't remember. Well, here you go. Thanks. Here. Keep the change. Well, thank you, sir. Now, 
I probably waited on you, but, well, uh, so many people, you know. Yeah, sure. Uh, why you ask? The lady lost her purse. Thought maybe it might have been turned in here. No, sir. We didn't get any places last night. Uh, a couple money clips is all. <laughs> yeah, not much in them, either. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're talking about the lady who died later on, ain't you, sir? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Uh, police officers was in here asking the same questions. I thought they would be. You, uh, policeman, too? No, I was a friend of hers. Oh. Well, uh, then you should call the police. They're still trying to find out her name. So am I. Hmm? Well, I thought you said she was a friend of yours. I didn't happen to know her name. It didn't seem important to ask it last night. I just don't understand. <sighs> I can tell you one thing. I might have saved her life if I'd asked her name and some other things. Uh, yes, sir, sure. Expense account item seven, three dollars, three drinks. I sat there for almost an hour talking to the bartender. Once, when he stepped out to the kitchen, I went over to the booth where I'd sat the night before with the unidentified dead girl. I searched down in the cushions, behind the table, under the chairs, hoping the missing purse might still be around. I found nothing. Then I had another idea. I left, went out to the parking lot where I'd first seen her. Got your car, mister? No, I don't have one. Oh, well? Hey, look, uh, last night I was out here with a lady. I, I met her and a man here in the parking lot, uh, about over there where that Chevy is. Uh-huh. So what? Well, the lady lost her purse last night. I just wondered if it, it might have been lost out here someplace. Well, it might have been. Nobody turned anything into me. Want to take a look? Sure, good. All right. About what time last night? Oh, around 10, maybe a few minutes after. Uh-huh. A lot of cars in and around that time of night. Did you look last night? No, I didn't know it was missing until this morning. Oh. About here, you say, huh? Here's the Chevy. Yeah. Well, let's take a look. Yeah, make it a good look. Yeah. Well, hey! I think you're in luck. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, here's a purse. Hey, <laughs> you're in real luck. Is that hers? It was hers, all right. A green suede purse, the same color as the green suit she'd been wearing. It still carried the faint sweet odor of her perfume as I remembered it. I looked inside, but there was nothing to tell me her name. Lipstick, comb, a $10 bill, and some small change. And one other item. A 32 automatic, recently fired. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a dead girl's 38 automatic comes to life. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood, written by John Dawson. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure and join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> <laughs>